Well, so great that y'all can be here. Thank you. And uh, we're just uh, delighted to have Ahmed Ali Hassan speaking. He is just a terrific individual. I cannot begin to say how pleased and honored we are to know him. First, let us tell you about ourselves. I'm Barbara Davis Levine. And I'm Steve Levine. And we have Small Business Day magazine talk show and events. Right. And our newest event, our newest endeavor is Coaching and Connections, where we help anybody are in business or somebody going into business, we help them do all the things they make sure they know how to do. Uh, we connect them with organizations that will help them to get certifications, educate them. In addition to that, we'll provide even introductions to clients. They have to do the sale, but we even teach them how to network and go with them to networking events. We're not like any coach you've ever heard of. Nope. We're, I'm, a, I'm a Jewish mama. I take everybody by the hand and say, here, you got to meet this person. So I'm very motherly. So we, it, it's caring. We did, we've been doing the coaching for the length of our marriage that we've been working in the publishing we've industry. We've been 20, 20 years we've been coaching and making connections, but we've never had it as a separate business. And it's all just about who we are. Sorry. Whether it's a youth entrepreneur, minority-owned business, uh, women-owned business, veteran-owned business, we are we make the connections for you. Most coaches just do that, just coaching, just give you words of advice over the phone. We literally meet with you and make sure you get connected to the right companies and potential clients. You gotta hurt yourself not to get grow your business with us, really. And and uh, said I've been a serial entrepreneur from the time I was in sixth grade. So I totally know what not to do in business. <laughs> I've learned over the years interviewing our top cover honorees. All the cover honorees are someone that's been nominated by our advisory board and voted if a certain group will vote for them unanimously to be on the cover. They don't pay to be on the cover. They have to be somebody that gives back to the community. Number one, if they're not caring for our community, we don't want them on our cover. They have to be somebody that, well, he can go on more. And Imad, Imad is going to be our next cover honoree, probably December. And because you're here today, each of you will be invited to his launch party right here, which is a very big deal. It's a VIP only. Uh, VIPs of the magazine and... and and his VIPs, and you're all included in his champagne launch of his magazine. How about that? Just for being here. And uh, also, said so the magazine is about someone that started with nothing and built something big, and uh, that is definitely explains uh, or why we would have selected Ahmed because he is he is a phenomenal individual. We are so honored to know him. He, in fact, introduced to us to our first cover honoree. But uh, we are delighted that he is now going to be our cover honoree. That's right. So, why don't you introduce him? Okay. And uh, go ahead. You want me? I'll do it. Ahead, I'll do it. You're okay. So I got the, I'm talking so far. I do a great job. <laughs> what else is new? <laughs> uh, Ahmad is the chairman and CEO of Optima Global Financial Group and Optima Vitamins, which, again, he's got a special deal on anybody that would like to maybe get involved and have their own franchise or their own opportunity with the vitamins. Uh, talk to him about that. He's a visionary entrepreneur and investor. His company, Opti Optima Global Financial, is a Texas-based private equity firm that invests across all market access sectors. The firm employs the expertise, education, and experience of a small group of analysts which work to locate the best investment options for his firm. So he's definitely, if you're an entrepreneur, he's a good one to know about investing and helping and maybe uh, helping to uh, with your next business endeavor. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you all for being here this afternoon. Steve and Barbara are a great friend of mine for many years. They have asked me that, actually, for the last two years. They've been fighting with me to be in the cover of the magazine. I did send them a good friend of mine. I almost introduced him to Farouk Shami about 10 years ago. We were here two months ago. So they are a good people. I know they have major big connection and them coaching businesses and uh, anybody trying to be in business they are the best to hire they're the good people so uh, i i give them my endorsement my name is ahmed al and i'm original from the country of jordan i came in here in 1977. i came in here as a student i'll give you just a little bit briefly about my life and then i'm gonna leave the floor open for questions it's better 
for a lot of people to ask because some of these people, they know who I am, they know my background, they know what I do for a living. So, I came in from Jordan 1977 to go to school. Came from a small town where maybe three, four days before I came in here, I was riding a donkey. <laughs> was not riding no Rolls Royce, no, 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 no Mercedes, none of that. My family are not very wealthy family, nothing my mom and dad. Got to bless their soul, they don't know how to read or write. So I came in here and I had no money broke. We borrowed 40 Jordanian dinar at the time. And that is equal to $340 American dollars. I have no idea how we arranged the airline tickets. So when I came into United States, by the time I landed in New York and I paid the $20 to the taxi and came in here, landed at the airport, I have no idea where I was. Uh, so the first stop of the bus somewhere dropped me here in the street, carrying my bag with a long hair coming from a small town. We had no water, no electricity, nothing. So I stood there carrying my bag for almost two hours in Main Street, I remember. Keep just walking, don't know what to do. Until a guy, he comes in and in a gas station, and he said, Hassan, Hassan. And he started to speak to him in Arabic. Hassan is an Arabic name. So I went to the guy and I said, hey, I don't know where I'm at. Please help me. So I gave them where I was and I had an I-20 from ELS Language Center in here. So I went there and I had the money with me, total $320. I didn't know how to count the money. They made a, an exam to me and I went to an English exam for level two. And then I didn't know how to count the money. They took the money from me was they took $220. So at that time, I remember they had about $70, $77, something like that, left in my pocket. So that now the school closed after 5 o'clock. It was a December 7, 1977. It's a Christmas time. It's cold. It's raining in Houston. So I don't know, I know. So the school closed, and I don't know where to go. So I'm sitting outside at the edge of the school. They don't have no place to go, honest to God. So one guy came to me. He comes every day and he pick up his brother at 5 p.m. from the school. That particular day, he was late. He was about an hour late to pick up his brother. And it's dark at 6, 6.30 p.m. So the guy comes in here and he asked me about his brother. He's speaking to me in English and I spoke to him in Arabic. <laughs> so when he happened to be a Christian guy from Jordan, from Amman, Jordan, he was an amazing guy. He said, what are you doing here? I said, I don't know what I'm, I have nobody, I'm here by myself. He said, are you serious? I said, yes. He said, where are you gonna sleep? I said, I don't know. He said, you going to a hotel? I said, I got $70, that's or whatever, 75, 70, whatever left from the 220 and the 20, so. So he took me to another guy, who was a Christian guy, from origin from Lebanon, his father was from Kuwait. He has an apartment and as he put me there, I slept in his apartment and the couch for one month. Eating eggs, one, every day one egg. That was my food. Don't know how to communicate with my family. Don't know how to, to get in touch with anyone, period. But all these things in here and I become who I become now, it is because of the blessing of my mom. When my mom passed away at the hospital, I swear, she was, her hand was open, according to the nurse, and she was saying, God bless Ahmed and send them to the United States, because that's what I want. I cry as an emotional, because when it brings me back, and I see where I'm at now, it is not that it is sad, it's beautiful, I wish it for everybody. I love to educate people, I love to teach people, I love to give people. That is what God blessing me every time. If I lose money from here, I gain it from here because I do it from the bottom of my heart. Because I got a big heart, don't need nothing from anybody except help people. That's what I do for right now. So I came in and I got and I started in the business. I met a beautiful lady from Lake Charles, Louisiana. She was a Cajun Kunas, <laughs> white lady from Lake Charles, Louisiana. And we went to, to school together. I went to University of Houston, then University of Houston told me, 
I wanted to study a flight engineering because my cousin was in a flight there and everybody back there like, you see your cousin did something, then you follow. So I studied as a flight engineering, went to University of Houston, and then sent us to college. So I was married there for, for 12 years, but since 1978 until now, I'm on my own business and working for myself alone. My first job was a church as a fried chicken, seven days. Then I worked as a busboy in a restaurant. Then I waited in a fire restaurant where I used to make $300 a night that time in 78, the oil was booming in Texas. And I opened the business in 1978. I got a partner with somebody and my wife, she is my ex-wife, used to work there. And I used to work there after hours. I used to sleep three hours a day for almost four years. Six months after I got in the restaurant, I sold it with a hundred percent profit. So then, then since 78, I've been having my own business until 1980 and 81. I got in the limousine business. I was one of the first people having a limousine business in Texas. Barbara will know that. And then for the last 35, this is what I'm telling you what I do now. For the last 35, I've been doing a financial business. I went to Jordan in 93, 94, opened two shopping centers there. And then I went there, I did not succeed, it didn't work. So I came in here for a whole month. I sat, even came back and I sat with my brother. And I sat for a whole month just thinking what's a good business to do. So I studied it, and I find the three good businesses that you can make so much money, and you don't need to work in the weekend, you do not need to work 12 hours, and you do not work seven days a week. So the three businesses was, the first one that you make big money out with somebody, like the Joel Austin, as a kind of business. That's I cannot do. I'm Muslim, I'm not going to be able to do that. Second thing was the medical and the financial, they are identical to each other. So I got them both of them. I bought medical clinics. And then after one year having the medical clinics were successful, I went and I said, I wanted to know what is the top business of the financial business. So when I did that, I met a good three friends of mine, Jewish friends. They told me, okay, Ahmed, we like it. we're going to teach you what we learn. They're all ex-CEOs. One of them was the ex-CEO of Bear Stern. The other one was the head CEO that used to be Commerce Bank at the time, if you remember, now it's Chase Bank. Become a chemical bank or something now. And then there was big top people that taught me for one year. I learned the business with them. It cost me with a contract with them $4 million to learn that business in one year. The business is IPOs and venture capital which is you and the right companies going to the stocks markets and you fund companies trading on the stocks market. That is my, my, and I've been doing that for the last 35. My company, I'm very selective. I only deal with companies, 500 million and above. I don't deal with anybody. I used to deal with pink sheet. I used to deal, now I'm very selective. I take certain company, I don't have to do, I can do one company for three years. But I do give funding for publicly trading companies. Never had any issues except one time with a Chinese company. I signed a contract with them to give them $30 million. And I gave them the first $5 million. Find out they were under an investigation with the SEC. And the SEC penalized me $5.7 million, believe it or not. So, and I said, no problem, SEC. I know you like to make money. It's OK. And the, the auditor from the SEC said, Mr. al Yassin, why you complain? You made a lot of money. Why don't you pay the money and just be quiet? I said, no, I'm gonna fight it because I didn't do nothing wrong. So anyway, me and them, we went through that. There is a penalty for 5.7 million mm. against me with the SEC. Now, my company, it's the financial company, very selective. Any companies you saw, they go IPOs, big companies. The hedge fund in New York, they call me. I'm one of the people that's I participate in any company goes pre IPOs when they want to go on the right. And now I look at it, I said, I don't need to do anything seriously. Companies goes public, especially under Trump administration. There was more companies went public than the last 10 years. Wow. In the United States, uh, NASDAQ or, or American stocks history. So when the companies go public, I go and I buy whatever I can. 
uh, block of stocks and I buy them in a discounted rate because I'm an accreditor investor. And it's not anybody can do that unless you are an accreditor investor, which is meaning that you must have certain asset, certain income every year. From that there, I, do my, I did my own investment, which is all my own. I am not a broker. I don't give financial advisor. I don't take people money in investment. I don't take money from body to invest it or give them return. None of that. I only do my own, whatever I can. My own ability, my own investment, nothing whatsoever. Don't give anybody advice. I'm not like a financial advisor, none of that. My company is a company that does funding and, uh, and, and venture capital and the IPOs. From my company right now, through these years, you know, I have, I travel, I have offices different parts of the world. That is, I travel and I have assets overseas, internationally. From there, I expanded to a different investment. One of the investment I have, I have a factory in Dubai. That is, it has all kind of uh, shampoos and detergents. It's a nice, beautiful, one of the best investment I did. It's been there for the last seven years. And I go back and come in. Then I have my other offices in a different part of the world for, for the financial company. Then I have my vitamin company here in the United States. That's all the vitamins is made in the United States. It's all natural vitamins. We do them through my compound pharmacy, which is I have a compound pharmacy. I only use it, use the pharmacy for compounding and formulating our own natural vitamins. No chemicals, nothing in there is all natural through our pharmacists and our doctors. And that's that's what it is. And so, and I, I, I'm, I'm going to open the floor for you all. If anybody has any question, I can go on and on. So much things I did, so, but... Uh, Let me be the first. Ma, what are your best words of advice for someone just starting a business or a small business now? When I got to the IPO business, the big CEO used to be a big CEO for one of the big financial companies in the United States. He said, Ahmed, we're going to send you to New York for a course for 12 hours, and again, a course to... $34,000 at the time. That was in 1994. And I said, okay, what would I need to do? He said, this is only for the top CEOs in the country. So I said, okay, I wasn't the top CEO in the country, nor I am now the top CEOs of the countries. So what they did, they made the arrangement for me through their contacts. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you what I learned from the 34000 dollars I pay, there is a lot of us in here that do not know it and it is something is so basic and it's so easy to know and it will make you successful and start your own business. So when I went there to New York, the first thing when we got in the meeting there teaching these CEOs, they asked the question, what does it take to have your own business or to be in your own business? Many people, everybody say credit, People say cash. Me, I came with no credit. I don't even know what the hell is a credit means. I don't know anything about that. I have no cash, nothing. I told you my story. So I said, I don't know. I jumped in the business just, you know, I jumped into it. And he said, that's exactly what it is. So what I'm saying to you is for you, if you wanted to get to your business, many people think of you as a location, is a credit, it's money, it's not. There's a lot of people like me as an investor, if I see somebody has something good, I'll put the money behind him, I don't need his money. All what I need is ability and his experience, but what's most important than that, it's to have the guts to get to the business. That's what's important, that's what my experience. Many people, they have money stuck in the bank, they are afraid. They put one foot in, one foot back. They, are, they worry, oh, what if I lose the one million? Or oh, what if I lose a half a million? It doesn't work. If you want to go to the business, you've got to have the guts for it, jump to the business and go on. And if you work hard and you do try it, you will become successful. The second thing, besides having the guts and the ball, is to have the right management in your business. You must have the right management in the business before you do any marketing or bring anybody and all of that. And the third thing is you do the marketing. You do these three things in here and you'll be successful in your business. I can tell you a lot of things that taught me in that course, but this is the basic, just almost to answer your question. I've seen firsthand this philanthropy. 
I have gone to many of his events, and he does extend hand out to people to uh, in the business world and in many different places. And uh, and I I commend him for that. You know, Thank you, Mike. Not too many people like that in the world, especially at, at, at his stature. And uh, I I my, myself. I coached him many times to do business uh, in real estate and uh, hoping that we can do something together on, on the future cases. Uh, See, that's I, why that's why Michael came in here today because he's going to my he wants to talk to me after that for the projects and there we go. I never stopped doing business. That's no, I know that. I know um, you are very consistent. Um, give me some your perspective about real estate. How about that? Something that uh, you haven't touched upon. But I'm hoping that I'll get you that. <laughs> believe, believe it, believe it or not, Michael. I uh, start to I diversified a lot of things. Uh, beside being in the market, because the top business, in, in my opinion, in my experience, is the market, not buying and selling stocks. Is the business I'm doing, which is the business I'm doing, the IPOs and venture capitals. I'm the only Arabs, by the way, doing it. If you look at the United States of America and you look at every billionaire in the United States of America, anyone, you name me any name, tell me how we become a, or he, he or she become a billionaires. It's because they want IPOs, no other way. Take a look from everyone, from Warner Buffett to Bill Gates to our president to every top CEOs and big companies. They all went IPOs and that's how they made money. Because even if you have your top company in the world and you're making profit $10 million a month, it's not that easy for you to have 70 or 80 or 100 billion. It's not. It's impossible. So all of them, they went public. That is how the most money-making machine in the world. I started to diversify to other businesses. That's why I bought my factory in Dubai and other investment I did. I did in my own country even. Uh, I have a lot of asset in, in, in Switzerland and in different countries. And I started to diversify to real estate. Believe it or not, I don't say anything about the real estate, but I have a good portfolio of the real estate. One of the portfolio I was working, you were working with me in, in a property I bought from a doctor and it went sour, but I do, uh, look at the real estate but the only thing is different why I'm not heavy in the real estate I tell you why in my portfolio in the stocks market I make my minimum per year believe it or not 18 percent my minimum income 18 percent the last two years some of my portfolios went as high as 400 the lowest portfolio, 40%. So when you compare the real estate that for the last five, six years, and you have experience with that, Michael, that is the top portfolio, and the real estate right now pays you 6.75, max 8%. If you go buy a shopping center, if you want to do that's all. that's what you get, max. I look, I receive a lot of... Uh, offers from shopping centers. I got a lot of big heavy brokers and companies on real estate that specialize in shopping centers. They send me offers with a good deal. I look at it. If it is 8%, I'll consider it. If it's not, if it's below 8%, I'll look at it in here. So that's why now I'm looking to do the real estate portfolio and just sit in it. Mostly shopping center to have people manage it. I am definitely looking into it and I did discuss it with my people and under. You know, because I have financial analyzers, person from all aspects, they advise me. Over. In my office, I'm in my office, if anybody came into my office, before, I'm in my office by myself. Me and my secretary been with me for almost since 19, what is it, how long Gloria been with me? Since 1995. She's there just all where she has the phone, I don't even take an appointment, I don't do anything. Everybody else is outside. I used to have everybody in my office, in my building, but I do everything, whatever I have a deal, because I'm not there solicitating business. I'm not there, I do business like a retailer every single day. I'm sitting at my desk, I look at the market, 
Dimitri was in my office yesterday and he's seen. I look, I'll be talking to people, meeting with them, but I'll be looking at my screen to see what's up and down because I'm watching and people don't know what I'm, what I'm looking for. So I see something good, I say, oh, excuse me, hold on. Either I make a call or something for work. That's what I do. But the real estate business, people have experience in it. That's what they want to do. I prefer to stick to what I know better and put aside money in real estate just, you know, for a future business. And I've been doing that. And we want to thank Mark Harris. Mark our, Harris. Our videographer. He's amazing. Mark. Thank you. Mark. There will be um, sound bites from this on Facebook and probably our website, which is getcoachingetc.com. That's our new website for coaching connections, getcoachingetc.com.